Hey everybody, I know this is kind of a weird way to start out a video, but there's a reason for it. So recently, I was given all of this awesome cool little flat shale rock and pieces of granite and these little awesome little brick pavers that they added these cool little feet to that were made to use as like a basking platform and all of these little pieces of marble, these big marble tiles. All this was given to me, and now, as I mentioned in O'Malley's upgrade, I'm going to use this to start to build up to give more vertical space taken up for animals to be able to utilize in my future enclosure builds. And we're going to start that one off with Nez Pierce, our gray banded king snake. Uh, we we're also given a bunch of different aquariums, and while I don't necessarily like those aquariums, and I'll probably say that several times throughout the video, this will provide me an opportunity to have a more display animal and to provide opportunities for an animal that doesn't necessarily, doesn't necessarily need a ton of humidity like a gray banded king snake or the alterna and to be able to give a chance to give a bunch of really cool uh naturalistic behaviors and actually once that that nez pierce moves up to the other one the old enclosure that he is in will actually be free and so i might put a a uh, flame mosaic king snake into there. And if you guys are interested, uh, let me know down in the comments if you'd like to see that enclosure build, if you're getting sick of me doing all the enclosure builds. But without further ado, let's get started. Now, I don't usually like these taller glass aquariums with the screen lids, but this is gonna provide me a good chance to be able to actually give a good amount of height in here and see how this works. So to start things off with, we're gonna stick with the substrate. So before in a lot of the builds I would do the choice between the two different substrates. So for instance, because we're doing the gray banded king snake, we would do a good majority of it on a more sandy, uh, rocky, desert, arid substrate because they're found in parts of uh, southwestern Texas where it's very dry, really rocky, really arid, really hot during the day. And then I would have another small little, pl a little place as a divider for where they would have the more uh, moisture and humidity keeping type of substrate. Lately, I've been switching it up and just making a uniform one throughout, but one that'll work really well. So in this case, this is a mix between play sand as well as organic topsoil. Again, if you ever want to make your own little mix like I do, make sure that you find organic topsoil, one that doesn't have additives or anything like that. Um, because these guys are from those sandy, arid areas, that makes it so this sandy mixed in with the topsoil will provide enough aeration for them to burrow through, as well as will maintain a little bit of... Uh, humidity retention, but not a ton. So we'll get started. So gray banded king snakes are from, as I said before, southwestern Texas. They're very rocky. They're found in a lot of areas that are full of rock hides um, and rock outcroppings, and that's where they're found a lot. So to start with, we're going to do this one, which will be right here at the front, but this will essentially act as a hide down below for the king snake Nez Pierce to get up and under. So we'll start right there with that. And then we'll probably come over here with this guy. No, let's do something like this little stack right here. This will be kind of cool, right? So we'll do this like that. So the biggest thing that you also want to remember when you're ever doing anything with these large rock heavy things is that it can't shift and potentially fall and harm, injure, or potentially kill your pet reptile or whatever it is that you're gonna end up putting in an aquarium. So whenever you have anything really big and secure and heavy like this, big and heavy, you always wanna make sure that it's very secure. A lot of people will actually hot glue them together. I'm just gonna make sure that these aren't gonna move in a way that a little king snake, um, and again, this is not going to be, I shouldn't say again, that's the first time I'm mentioning it, but this will not be the full setup for the lifetime of the snake. This is too small for an adult gray and banded king snake in my opinion. But we're growing him kind of slow. He was kind of a trouble feeder, so he's a little small for his age. So he's going to be in here for a while, and then eventually I'll put him into a much larger enclosure down the road. So we're going to continue right along with that in mind. We're going to give another little rock outcropping right here. So essentially the idea is we want to utilize all of the space here. A lot of the problems that we have with people when they use these things are they find that they are only taking really the bottom in just a little bit. Um, in the African fat tail gecko video, we I built out the little styrofoam uh, background where they can climb up with little platforms and things like that. I'm not doing with this one because I ha was given all of these really cool pieces of rock and marble and brick. So that way I'm going to build it up a little bit more without utilizing a back piece here. But hopefully I'll still be able to utilize a whole lot more. So the snake will actually still have a good majority of the bottom here. He'll have all here, all back here, 
I'll have a water dish right here that I forgot to grab. That's okay, we'll do it when we move it back over to the actual shelf where it's gonna sit, as well as we'll have some other things for the snake to climb around on. So let's go ahead and do this. Let's do that. So this will essentially be another place. So the idea is I'll eventually, I'm gonna have a halogen UV light on, on the top right here for him to bask on the top, where it'll be not that far of a distance, maybe like eight inches or so from the very top, as well as I'll have a nice little climbing branch here for them to get to. But this will provide lots of places for him to crawl under and hide in and amongst here and feel secure, and also places for him to bask either cryptically or fully exposed if he so wanted to. So we'll come over here and we'll do, let's see, how do we want to do this? This is really, I really like this piece of rock. It's really cool. I just like that. It's that. I, I'm not, I don't know a whole lot about the different types of rock, unfortunately. I'd love to be able to spout a little bit about this. Maybe if somebody's watching this, they can actually tell me what kind of rock this is. So I was going to put it over here. That doesn't seem quite secure for my personal liking. So we'll do that. How about this? You think that? Always, always want to make sure that it's, if you're going to test it, you don't want that animal to be having it fall on them. I don't like that. So let's try this. We'll try that. Ooh, there we go. That'll work. Just like, eh, went a little flat. So there we go. Lots of places for him to perch. I'll have the halogen light sit right on top, like right here. And there'll be lots of places for him to perch up. So now this is going to be like the more hot side. In the winter, I'll have a heat pad or a ceramic heat emitter on top for them to have the additional heat if necessary um, when he's not going to be cooling down uh, because he will brumate eventually. So in the meantime, what we're going to think about his little enclosure, we're going to get something for a little bit of humidity over here. So we'll do this, and this will be right here. But what I'm going to do is actually put some sphagnum moss in here a little bit more because we always want to add a nice little humid hide because theoretically, even in the wild where these guys are found, they would go into a little rock crevice or maybe even a small little burrow where there's more humidity retention for them to shed in and out. And so even though with the way Nez Pierce's setup was before, it wasn't necessarily as good of here. He essentially got rid of all of this and he would just sit under his water dish and he would still have no shedding issues. I still want to provide that ability to have the humid hide for him to have the option if he so wanted to do so. Now we're going to grab this really cool thing, this nice little choya wood branch. So just like that, we're going to put a water dish back here. So there's that. So here we go. He'll get up and under here so he won't ever be a whole lot fully exposed on the ground, fully exposed out here. But we'll have this whole area under here, under here, over there, over here, over there. Let's see. How do we want to do this? Let's do, there we go, nice little artificial plants, because we want to add a little bit of greenery to this as well, just to change it up. So there we go, like so. We'll do another one in the back over here, like that. So there we go. How do we think? That looks pretty good. So we're gonna, I'm going to move this over to the shelf over there. I'm going to move the water. I'm going to put the water dish in there. And then we're gonna fully set it up and we're gonna have him in there. We're gonna see how he likes that. So we've now moved the cage over here to its permanent spot over here on the shelf, at least permanent until it gets upgraded again. So here's Nez Pierce, our little boy. Little Faye, cute little Blair's face. Alterna. He's actually in shed right now. He's just looking a little bit dull. But so we're gonna put him in here. So maybe. We're gonna put him in here. Come on, bud. There we go. There we go, maybe, possibly. Come on, buddy. <laughs> there we go, there he's going, he's going. All right, there goes Nez Pierce, all right, cool. So, now we're gonna put the lid on top. And we're gonna add a weight to it in a little while. We're gonna come over here with the light. Sorry about that. Just like so. A little halogen UVB, UVA light. A little power strip with all the light in the back. Sorry about that. So here we go. So we're going to back it up just a little bit. So here's the full tank setup. So from start to finish, as we kind of went over it really quick, 
at the end. Let's see, where is he hanging out? Let's see if we can find him. Not sure we went already. All right, cool. That's that's okay. So we start with this nice substrate of a mix of that topsoil and the play sand that it's not too fine of a grit. Doesn't have those sharp edges like the walnut that I've mistakenly used in the past before I knew better. Um, and the organic topsoil without the additives, so that makes for a nice, nice little substrate for him. It looks fairly naturalistic. Then we have this cool little thing that was used for uh, other arid looking, other arid reptiles. We made these really cool little op rock outcropping here, as I'm incapable of speaking coherently, other than this phrase and, you know, the one explaining it. Then we have the little humid hide here. So we have the hot side, the cool side. We have a lot of space here to be utilized now, finally, instead of other setups that I've done in the past. Different textures here with the little artificial, with not artificial, but with the little half log with the natural wood. The choya wood that was field collected here in Colorado that was cleaned and baked for a long period of time, so it's okay to use. Nice big heavy water dish, so if he really wanted to burrow under there, he probably could and be okay. A couple artificial plants in the back, and then a little halogen light bulb because I do not have quite enough of the awesome VivTech Sure Sun bulbs yet, but we are working on that. So we're gonna see if we can come over here, see if we can find them. All right, see, there you go. This is natural behavior that you would see from a lot of different species of reptiles, including these king snakes, where they would go and they would find nice tight fitting crevices here, and they will pick whichever ones they feel most secure in throughout their day as they thermoregulate and are looking around and are just curious about their environment as they move things. So if we were to go down and make a road trip down to South Texas, and we'd spend hours and hours and hours herping looking for these guys, eventually, there's his little face. Uh, we might be able to find one of these guys. And if we, you know, got lucky, it'd be on the road while we cruise. But if not, this is the type of rock outcropping where we'll be looking in tiny little wedges and cracks on rock walls and, and uh, places like that where they would be blending in during the day or coming out and basking in the evening before they came out and started hunting and looking for... Uh, other king snakes to either eat or to, uh, you know, make more little king snakes. Oh, there he is. All right, cool. I had a feeling he was going to get kind of curious. They're, uh, gray banded king snakes make amazing pets uh, because, A, king snakes in general make really good pets, but the gray bands seem to be a much more tolerant with people, including with, uh, like, the defensive uh, and very uh, high prey drives. They still do have a really great prey response, but it seems like they're some of the more handleable, tolerant, and not as high-strung, I guess you could say, species of king snakes around. But I look forward to seeing how he's going to love this. Um, it's still not, you know, perfect, and I could still give him a few more things like this, but I want to see how he's going to utilize this little area um, before I entirely fill up an enclosure like this. But this is already more than a lot of people do to begin with. We've utilized a lot of this vertical space. So, I mean, it's half of the tank is entirely filled up and this will allow him to move around, not get too, too close to that because those halogen bulbs do produce a fair amount of heat, uh, not compared to just say like a straight basking bulb, like a 90 or 100 watt bulb. But these guys do produce some heat, which will allow, some for, which will allow for some cool basking opportunities right here. As well, just the ambient temperature in here is pretty warm to begin with. So that's why I don't have an additional heat source on here, at least for the spring and summer, probably into fall. Winter, I will address that as always with either an underheat mat or maybe I will add one of the little dual bulbs and put a ceramic heat emitter on top. We'll see. But I just wanted to do this fun little update of the Grey Band King Snake Nez Pierce. He, along with O'Malley, have been documented and probably moving the most amount. So if you guys like this, like the idea of doing something a little bit different like that, um, please feel free to uh, let me know what you think down in the comments. Um, if you guys have any ideas for future things, please also let me know. Um, if you want to go check out um, the playlist of all the other enclosure builds, you can see the progression that I made with him as well as several other king snakes and other snakes in general like O'Malley, the Mexican black king snake who we just did uh, an upgraded terrarium build as well. So you can check out how essentially we've progressed between, you know, starting with a substrate that we didn't necessarily know was 100% correct. It, every research thing that we found, it seemed like it was good for snakes, not necessarily for lizards, come to find out that nope, not so great for snakes either. 
So we change it up. We provide them with more with a larger enclosure with a choice between substrates and whether they want to spend their time. And then we move it up to a larger enclosure to where we provide them with more with an ability to more actually recreate their natural behavior. So while they're not necessarily giving the choice to the substrates, we're providing them with a larger area and more opportunity for them to actually have and exhibit some of their natural behavior. So hopefully again, you guys did enjoy this video. Hope everyone's having a great day and we will check you next time.